Welcome to Adolescence. For be the things I am wiser to know, idleness, sorrow, a friend, and a foe. For be the things I'd better without, love, curiosity, freckles, and doubt. By Dorothy Parker, Enough Rope, Inventory, ST1. Here we are in Adolescence. Welcome. There are none of the experiences you can do right now. Select an action. Meet someone, break someone, leave this icon. Never mind. Here were the stats, I believe. These are my stats. This is how much money I have. So, dun 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 dun. <clears throat> Age. <clears throat> money. Risks. You are at the drugstore purchasing some feminine articles. You are about to bring them up to the cash register when you notice that Mike Barty is at the cashier. Is the cashier. Be embarrassed? No. Be normal. Bring them up to the register. Mike sees you and gives you a big hello. While he is packing your stuff, he throws in two packs of gum from behind the register and smiles. He didn't even seem to pay attention to what he was bringing up. He was looking at my damn beauty go. You are in one of your ultra cool modes. While cruising through the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and let a swear word sneak out. Beep. Your mother calls you in from the other room. She says, did you say what I thought you said? I'm going to be too cool to care. Tell her you did it and apologize. Tell her you did it and so what? So what? She says. Her eyes seem to glow for a while. Then she gets frighteningly calm. She speaks almost in a whisper. So what? She says softly. I'll have to remember that phrase when you ask me to drive you somewhere or buy you a new blouse or cook you dinner. The list extends well into the twilight of the evening. Mom, you're wasting my time. I've got better things to do. The family dog has been acting a little peculiar lately, and no one can figure out why. Some of your fellow family members suggest that maybe he should be given away, or worse, put to sleep. Dad delivers an ultimatum. The dog must shape up or ship out. You are the only one in the house who can take the responsibility for getting him back into shape. Feel like taking on the responsibility and train the dog. You spend every available minute keeping an eye on the dog rewarding him for good behavior and keeping him out of trouble. One day when you return home from school, you smell what can only be the dog's byproducts. Number two to be specific. The smell is a man name from your parents' bedroom. You enter the bedroom to find the dog sleeping peacefully in the corner and a sculpture sitting squarely atop dad's favorite pillow. Fortunately, no one is home. You can... This... Pose of the pillow and admit the truth. Your father becomes furious. He screams, I knew it! That mangy animal had made me miserable for the absolute less time. The following week, the dog is given to your Uncle Fred. Well, I was trying to be kind, and this is the thanks I get. Well, next time, I will lie. I will lie. A little while later, on the back of your cereal box, you see contents to name the cartoon character that represents a cereal. You enter, and because you are very bright and creative, you win! Your prize package consists of full five years supply of crunchy marshmallow chewos. Fun. <clears throat> Let's do love, because I love that. Your dad decides he wants to have a long talk with you about college. In his talk, he advises you to do all the things you think you would like to do at least. He is pushing hard for you to attend to college very close to home. In the middle of everything, he says, You know, sweetheart, I don't know how necessary a college education is for women anyway. You get the distinct sense that he has already planned the next eight years of your life for you. You become angry. No, um, anxious. And tell him that you disagree with what he is saying. You get the following reply. Nonsense. You're much too young to know what you're interested in. Just listen to me and everything will be fine. Boring. A few people get a little wild playing spin the bottle. 
at a friend's house yesterday. As a result, your neck looks like if stung by a pack of wild hornets. As you walk out of the bathroom, Mom inquires about the curious-looking marks. Become crafty and give an excuse. You must really think Mom was born yesterday. When she was your age, she once got quite a hickey from your father. Whatever excuse you think of only makes her feel angry that you would take her for such a fool. An argument ensues, and it gets boring lecture about the potential dangers of the dreaded hickey. It could create a blood clot that could go to your brain and kill you. Blah, 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 blah. What's living anyway, right, guys? Even though it happens to be true, you probably don't pay too much attention to it. Okay, so in any order, they're sorted chronologically. Oh, okay, we can pick anyone. Okay, boom, boom. All of your friends are skipping class, and they want you to come along, too. Be interested and skip class. I am uninterested, and I am going to go to class. You spend a boring day in class thinking about your friends, what are probably doing. Do your schoolwork. I want a good education to prove my dad wrong, by the way. You were very studious and very lucky as well. After school, gorgeous Bob Fredrickson, what is that name? Bob Fredrickson, asked you to tutor him in math. Looks like it was worth staying around after all. A little while later, it's summer vacation time. Because you have excellent social skills, you have an exciting summer with your friends. Traveling, romancing, and probably getting into a bit of trouble. If you know what I mean. <clears throat> a group of kids hardly know you hardly know have just made fun of you. Usually this might not bother you, but lately you have been feeling down in the dumps about a lot of things. Your physical appearance has been disappointing you. Your family has been giving you a hard time about almost everything, and no one seems to be saying or doing anything positive toward you. You have a bad case of the blues. Bad case of the blues, eh? Depressed and sad, talk to someone. Let it pass. It may sound like an old cliche, but the fact is that time does heal all. Or at least most wounds. Research shows that many people have the ability to ride through their depressions. I'm sorry. You have been going out with a guy to play this episode. You may try again later. <laughs> okay. You and your friends have all gone to shore for a beach party. It's late at night. One of our friends has a suggestion. He says, let's go skinny dipping. Wait for everyone else to take their clothes off because I've done that. Been there. That's really uninhibited. At all right. All the uninhibited people are already in the water. You have barely moved your sneakers. Are you sure you really want to go through with this? Yes. You take off your clothes and quickly jump into the water. After a while, you begin to get cold. Unfortunately, when you decide to come back out, you realize that everyone else has already left the water. As a matter of fact, they are all dried off and dressed already. Again, when you emerge, all eyes are upon you and your various attributes. Take a look. I'm good, boys. I'm good. You know what? Let's go on a date. I have an experience. Talk about becoming engaged. Meet someone. Let's meet someone. Where would you like to meet this person? In school. Where would you... Wh whom would you like to meet? Uh, let's meet someone named... We'll name it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Give me a second here momentarily, guys, when I pick out a random number. The random number is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and I was already highlighted on you. Go, Jeff, go. You have chosen to meet with Jeff. His characteristics may be described as follows. He is very trustworthy, gentle. He's not very calm. He's not very happy. He is very confident, and he is moderately good-looking. Damn. You met Jeff during study hall. After talking with one another for a while and giving each other time to get a good first impression, you talk about going out. The big moment comes when he finally asks you on a date, and you accept. A little while later, your family decides to take a trip across the country. 
this summer because you have good family relationships you have a wonderful time intellectual sphere scores rise dramatically as you learn about the country in wyoming you meet a foxy guy who teaches you about life in general Can I do this you were at a new year's eve party with the guy you were seeing your best friend and her date everyone seems to be caught up with the spirit of the holiday when midnight strikes you give your boyfriend a nice big hug and a sloppy wet kiss and then turn around to wish some of your friends a happy new year when you turn around you see your boyfriend and your best friend stuck together in lip lock be angry say something to your boyfriend they both look at you as if you have two heads maybe you were overacting later on that evening you see him with his hand on her leg we're breaking up i'm breaking up with you right now break off with someone Yep, we're break even though you have chosen to break up this relationship, it will have an impact on you personally. Please check the status screen to see what your adjustments have been. I don't even know what my previous adjustments were. So we are gonna go on a date and I'm gonna meet someone. Yeah, we're gonna meet someone and he is gonna be from near home and his name is gonna be Mark. Well, Mark, you have chosen to meet with Mark. His characteristics may be described as follows. He is not very trustworthy. He is very gentle. He is very calm. He is not very happy. He is moderately confident, and he is moderately good-looking. Great. You met Mark. After talking with one another for a while and giving each other time to get a good first impression, you talk about going out. The big moment comes when he finally asks for you a date, and you accept. A little while later, you have found a new way of expressing yourself through the way you comb your hair straight up your family constantly asks you when you're going to change back to normal but are generally tolerant tolerant of it let's go here your mother has been out all day and has just phoned to tell you that she's stuck with the car she sounds exhausted dinner hasn't been started yet and the house will be filling up with people any minute it looks like it's going to be a zoo you were supposed to go out with your friends the best place to go after she gets home would be miles away sympathetic to mom make dinner for everyone Family, social, and emotional characteristics. Take a healthy jump. What would you like to prepare? You look through the cookbook. Ooh, ooh, let's make chicken meringue. That sounds good. Well, but then again, is she a good cook? That's a good question. I don't know. Is she good? Let's do hamburgers and french fries. Quick and easy. It satisfies all the hungry beasts in the house and doesn't take much time. You still go out with your friends. Mom slips you a 10 for spending money and gives you a big kiss. You are terrific. I know I am. Damn. I'm good. Take a look at me. Oh, yeah. Your home economics teacher, Miss Eshkabach, Elias Queen Nerdetta, is upset because no one seems to be t paying any attention to her. Most of the students in class are going completely berserk. Matt just made a dough bomb and hurled it across the room. Larry stole a frog from science class and covered it with melted chocolate. You were taking its stride and just laughed hard when Jimmy spilled some flour on the front of Jeanette's skirt, then tried to brush it off. All of a sudden, Miss Eshpin singles you out and tells you to go to the principal's office. What will you do? Go down in the office. You are on your way down in the office when it occurs to you that no one will know if you just walk around in the halls for a little while. Go to the office. You wait outside the principal's office while the secretary announces your request for a meeting. The principal is fed up with Ms. Ishpid dropping all her problems on him. Sends you back to class. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been to school. Is that a real thing? I don't know. A cousin of yours asks if you would like to inherit her wig collection. <laughs> Interested except the wigs. You never know. You might get leukemia. The wigs look kind of funky, but you begin wearing them as a joke because you have a good social skills. Your friends see you and think you are on some new fad. Everyone begins wearing old wigs. You are calling yourselves the dead possums. You and your friends are in the living room listening to albums, talking about guys and stuff, and your mom comes breathing through the door asking if you would like some milk or cookies. You hear your friends snickering behind you. Because your family relations are good, you tolerate the embarrassment as well, being careful not to hurt her feelings. Let's go here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but you have to job. How do I get a job? Do I literally have to go here? Risks? No, that's risk. You're getting ready for a party and begin to wonder how sexy you can make yourself. Uh, look. Okay, kids. Turn away. There's some sexy black lace panties you can wear. Continue. In your closet, there's a good type pair of jeans. Continue. You think you're wearing a red top with a zipper that goes all the way down to the front. Continue. You decide not to wear a pro. Continue. A nice pair of red spiked heels should make this outfit sizzle. Continue. Your friends beg you to go on. Continue. 
Now tug down the zipper just enough, but not too much. Continue. When you get to the party, all eyes are upon you. Every guy who walks by you begins drools. You look amazing. The girls are beginning to think you are a bit of a slut. Well, good for you, Dimmy. One of the older kids in school takes you aside and offers you a quick way to make money by dealing drugs. Nothing too heavy or dangerous, according to him. All you would have to deal is some pot and a few lewds. Oh, no one will ever suspect a girl not interested refuse to do it. He tells you that you have just passed up the opportunity to make some easy money. He's caught dealing three weeks later, but nothing much happens to him. Three months after that, you read that he was jailed in South America during a drug-related incident. Good for you, pal. Good for you. What is this game? It's ten minutes until the bell rings for the gym. Mrs. Black, otherwise known as Orca, can be such a pain with her callous... I don't know. Everyone is going to the mall after school, and the last thing you want to do is sweat the course. No one will go near you. Imagine taking your shoes off in the shoe store and knocking out everyone in the place. Gross. Honest and go to gym class? <sighs> As soon as you walk into the gym for you begin to sweat. It won't be long after you're looking and passing the word that you're B.O. Take a shower after gym class. Of course you realize that there are hair dryers or curling hours in the gym. Do you still want to take a shower? Yes. Your desire for cleanliness is admirable. You step into the shower and turn on the faucet. The drops trickle on and only one actually touches you. A stream of icicles run down your back, chilling you to the bone. Your skin and lips turn bright blue. You want to get out there as soon as possible, so you quickly search for the soap. There's a small speck of soap that would barely clean a flea. Discouraged, you step out of the shower and begin to draft. Just as you're about to walk by your locker, a big slimy cockroach crawls out and walks right by you. A little while later, an all-boys school has asked for one member of your class to be a guest exchange student just there for months. Just think, one whole month in a school that has nothing but wall-to-wall -wall guys. Gym class will never be better. Students are reviewed for consideration, but the principal has your name in front of him. You have the right, uh, right intellectual capability. Socially, you are sophisticated enough. Finally, your emotional sphere shows you are controlling your impulse. Congratulations, you're going. I'm going. You guys, I'm going. Money. Apply for a job. For what kind of job would you like to do? Clerk in a drugstore. Congratulations. You start work immediately. <clears throat> Your best friend has asked to borrow an outfit that you like a lot and look really good in. Uh, generous, lend it to her. She thanks you for it and she tells you you are a true blue friend. That night when you run into her, she's wearing it. You can't believe how good she looks on it. And as a matter of fact, you can never look good that in that a billion years. Force her a compliment. Sincerely give her a compliment. Your gentleness characteristic shows that you can be kind and sincere even when you are feeling a bit envious. She appreciates the compliment. When she returns it, you can tell her to keep it. She says, I would love to, but to tell the truth, I really didn't like the way it looked to me. You look really special in it. The tone in her voice says she really means it. What a friend. Oh, what a friend indeed. What a friend we have. Mm -hmm. On the back of an old matchbook cover, you see an offer which promises you the possibility of a free art scholarship if you can draw Winnie. A cartoon carrot figure on the inside five. Interested? Draw Winnie. Your picture is returned with an offer to enroll in a home study course sponsored by the International Institute of Constructive Creative Painting and Art. Tuition, of course, waived because you qualify for a full scholarship. There's 499.99 plus sales, tech wear, plus a roll full for two and things. Are you interested in purchasing these materials? Oh, I feel like that's going to be a scam, but okay. Congratulations. You just paid almost $500 for a large pack of crayons and some blank paper. You have been fooled by a very thinly discussed sham. Intellectual spear drops fists significantly as well as money. I, I knew that was a scam. Friend of yours at school is getting pregnant and decided to get married. Aw, congratulations! I know it's tough, girl. The whole town is buzzing about it as if it were an awful scandal. Your mother has been gossiping about it nine day with her nosy friends. Every once in a while she tells someone on the phone, If that were my daughter, I locked her up until she was 25 before I ever let her out on a date again. Your friend is frightened and embarrassed. One day you receive a phone call from your friend. She tells you that her boyfriend will be quitting high school and going to work full time. They will be married in three weeks. She wants to know whether you would consider being a bridesmaid at a wedding. Flattered and agree. 
As it turns out, the wedding is small but touching. Your friend is her mother's wedding dress, which seems too large and much too long. As you watch her walk down the aisle, you couldn't possibly imagine trading places with her. The groom looks terrified. His father rests a strong hand on his shoulder throughout the ceremony. As you eye the people who are attending, you are some you see some people crying tears of happiness and others shaking their head and gossiping. Later in the day, you overhear a woman say, if that were my daughter, I would die. Five minutes later, she tells your friend's mother how beautiful and mature. Her daughter looked... Sometimes the dolls seem to face. It can make you sick. One day, you are stepping out of the shower. Your father walks into the bathroom and sees you standing there, stark naked. His face turns white, and he is frozen in his tracks, staring. You are mortified as you try to cover up. He avoids you for about three days, trying to hide his own embarrassment. I think I'm going to end part one here, you guys. There's a lot to go, so you'll see me in part two. Bye!